This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Last year, BYD made more money per car than Ford. The Chinese automaker brought in a net profit of about $4.1 billion and sold just over 3 million vehicles, which means it would have made about $1,350 on every car it sold. But because BYD makes more than just cars, statistics company Late Finance puts its profit per vehicle closer to $1,250. Even so, that compares to Ford who brought in a net profit of about $4.3 billion and sold about 4.4 million cars worldwide, which means it made just under a thousand bucks on every one it sold. And BYD is not too far behind the VW Group or GM, who made just under and just over $1,600 per car respectively. However, they're all way behind Tesla, who makes over $8,200 on every car it sells. But it also makes a lot of sense these other automakers would earn less than Tesla because they sell less expensive models, like BYD Seagull, which is now under 10 grand in China. I'm sure it's one of the reasons BYD introduced its upscale brand Yang Wang to sell higher priced models that earn more profits. And BYD also hopes to increase profits by coming out with even cheaper battery technology. According to reports, the company's chairman said during a meeting that it's working on the second generation of its blade battery. He said it will be smaller, lighter, and offer lower power consumption while still providing the same range. If you like to nerd out on some numbers, the current blade battery is capable of 150 watt hours per kilogram, but the next gen is expected to be around 190 watt hours per kilogram. That would probably make it the most energy dense LFP or lithium iron phosphate battery and puts it closer to traditional batteries, which are more expensive. The new BYD blade battery could come out as early as this year. Tesla settled a lawsuit over a fatal crash involving its autopilot system a day before the trial was going to start. The terms of the settlement weren't disclosed, but the case involved Walter Wong, a 38-year-old Apple engineer who was killed in 2018 when his Tesla Model X veered off the highway in California and struck a roadside barrier at 71 miles an hour. The vehicle was operating on autopilot at the time of the crash, but an investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board also found that the driver was probably distracted by a video game on his iPhone. Tesla won two previous trials in California involving autopilot crashes, but obviously it felt it was better off settling this case than going to trial, even though the driver was partially at fault. Speaking of Tesla, it slashed the time it takes to install a supercharger station in half. Several years ago, it started making its own prefabricated superchargers, and in 2022, it said it could build a 12-stall station in eight days but now it says it's down to four days. Tesla is now pouring its own concrete blocks into molds that have spots for the wires to go through and the charger units to be bolted down to. Cranes can then lift the concrete blocks with the charger units already installed and take them wherever they need to go. With so many automakers getting access to Tesla's charging network, it's probably a good thing that it figured out a way to install the new chargers even faster. When the elements are working against you, being confident in your grip on the road is what really matters. Bridgestone Alenza tires. Improved acceleration in wet conditions. General Motors is set to resume testing its cruise robo-taxis. Bloomberg reports the company could make an announcement as early as today, according to two people familiar with the plan. The tests will initially resume in Phoenix, Arizona, with safety drivers on board. The company is also in talks with 20 cities it already operated in or had started mapping to begin tests once again. Last year, Cruise suspended all of its operations in the U.S. after one of its vehicles dragged a pedestrian who was already struck by another vehicle in San Francisco. That led to the resignation of its founder and CEO, and nine other executives were fired. 
Getting crews back on track is very important to GM. CEO Mary Barra has said it could generate revenue of $50 billion a year by 2030. Good news for Ford dealers in Europe. The automaker is dropping its plan to move to a direct sales model and instead will develop the, quote, advanced franchise model. Ford did a direct sales pilot in the Netherlands and then planned to roll it out to the rest of Europe. It previously delayed that plan until 2026, but now Ford is scrapping it altogether. While this will give dealers some relief, it's not all good news. Ford is also planning to downsize its dealer network in Europe as it transitions to an electric-only brand in the region. But Ford isn't the only automaker moving away from the direct sales model. Stellantis, BMW, Audi, and Jaguar Land Rover have all delayed or revised plans to do so in Europe. BMW announced that it's forming a partnership with Croatian supplier Rimac Technology to jointly develop electric drive technology and solutions for high voltage batteries. Rimac Technology, not the car maker, makes battery packs, e-axles, as well as electronic and software components. The two companies didn't reveal any other details, but they say they'll share more info at a later date. And you may remember Rimac, the car company, also bought Bugatti in 2022. Porsche debuted its new active ride suspension on the Panamera and will also launch a version on the new Taycan as well. But it's forming a partnership with another active suspension company to expand its use of the technology. Porsche signed a deal with Clearmotion, who regular viewers of this show may remember, we had on Autoline After Hours in November of 2022. Clearmotion bought its tech from Bose and it kind of acts like noise-canceling headphones creating exact opposite outputs of the inputs the system is getting from the road. It does this at extremely fast speed with an electronic hydraulic pump that's attached directly to the damper. Porsche is also working with Clearmotion on crowdsourced road data that includes sensor info from inside the car to provide details like a pothole or traffic ahead or the need to slow down for a fast turn. We wonder if technology like this might also be applied to the racetrack. And when we had the CEO of Clearmotion on the show, he said the suspension technology could be used to improve the in-cabin experience. And just imagine watching Jurassic Park and being able to feel the footsteps of the T-Rex approaching. Ford revealed the updated 2024 Mustang Mach-E and it's taking orders now in the U.S. It has more performance, more range, and faster charging times than previous Mach-E's. With the new GT performance upgrade, the car can go from 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds and run the quarter mile in 11.8 seconds at 114 miles an hour. DC fast charging from 10 to 80% is now 36 minutes, which is about 9 minutes faster than before. All Mach-E's have 10 to 20 miles more of range, depending on the model. And Ford also revealed the off-road Focus Mach-E Rally will come to the U.S. as well. Pricing for the 2024 model starts just under 40 grand. And here's something for all of our off-road enthusiasts. Toyota has been teasing the new 4Runner for the last week or so, but the model will finally make its debut today at 10 p.m. Eastern or 7 p.m. Pacific time. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi 4 compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. 
That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software-defined vehicles.